Good afternoon, my world of rogues. My name is Erin Rogoff, and I would like to welcome you back to my booktube channel, where the host is perpetually happy and the videos are plentiful. Now, I forget if I have 200 videos or 220 videos of nothing but books and videos of my dog, but anyway, I have over 200. So that is a milestone for me, just saying. Anyway, I've been thinking about some of my favorite books to reread over and over again, like Six Months Later by Natalie D. Richards, and The Crank Trilogy by Ellen Hopkins, and One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. Those are just the top three that I can name right now, but there are so, so many. Oh my gosh. Anyway, seeing that there was a sale for some of these books on my Kindle this morning, I felt no hesitation in buying some of these books. Anyway, there was a part one to my November 2019 book haul, so I thought, why not make a part two since the books keep rolling in and rolling in and rolling in. Anyway, one of the books that I got was on my Kindle. It's One Was Lost by Natalie D. Richards, and that is a young adult fiction mystery suspense novel. It's a standalone. And as for the tagline, damaged, deceptive, and dangerous, and darling. Are they labels or a warning? The answer could cost Sarah everything when she goes on a camping trip. As for ratings, Barnes & Noble rates the book a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Goodreads rates the book a 3.8 out of 5 stars. And Google users said that 95% of the readers enjoyed the book. And as for reviews, I'm actually adding to this new segment. Kirsty Anonymous rated the book a 4 stars, and as her review, read this book in one sitting, helped add to the creep factor, sat with my back to an open window, felt the hairs on the back of my neck stand up a few times. So if that isn't enough reason for me to read this thriller novel, I don't know what is. And then another girl, Danielle Anonymous, she rated the book a 4 stars. I had a feeling things were going to go from bad to worse when I started reading this, and I was right. So, uh, have you heard the out of the frying pan and into the fire quote? It was actually used in the, um, the Hobbit movie when Bilbo was escaping the Goblin Mountain with the dwarves and then the, they got kind of sarcastic and like, oh, they're out of the frying pan and Gandalf says, and into the fire. And I just love that scene, so that made me think, okay, yes, this is enough reason to buy a book. Anyway, anything can be a reason to buy a book, even in no reason purchase of buying a book. That counts, too. Another book I got was We All Fall Down, another book by Natalie D. Richards, and that is a young adult fiction contemporary romance psychological thriller. And it's another standalone novel. And there's this character, Theo, who's impulsive and obsessed over the decision to tell Paige how he feels. So he knows it's time. So tonight at the party at the riverbank under the old walking bridge, he decides to go for it. So what bad could happen? Apparently a lot considering the book is um, a psychological thriller and has horror aspects. Anyway, as for ratings, I could only find two. Amazon rates the book a 3.5 out of 5 stars, and Goodreads rates the book a 3.4 out of 5 stars. So, supposedly it isn't as good as Natalie D. Richards' other books, but I'm still going to read it and review it just because it's a book by an author I love, so that's a reason for me anyway. And then as for reviews, Ashley on Quotes have rated the book 3 stars. I preferred one was lost to this one. This novel felt forced, like the author was trying to meet a page quota and kept repeating the same material to get there. Now, if you know me, you know that I don't like repetitive sentences over and over again, even though I might say things like that, so that's a conundrum in itself. But that just goes to show that this book might not be the best of Natalie D. Richards' books. And then there's this girl, Jody, who rates the book at a five stars, which is a bit of a surprise. Unputdownable. I say this is one of Natalie's critique partners who has read the book in various stages on multiple occasions. Seriously, unputdownable. So I figure that's enough reason to buy it and read it. And then another book that I got by Natalie D. Richards. I can't believe how many books I have by her now. Anyway... Gone Too Far is a young adult fiction, contemporary romance, mystery, and it's a standalone novel, 
and it's about this girl named Piper who's been keeping secrets that have ruined her life, but the truth may kill her, so she doesn't know quite what to do. Amazon rates the book a 4.2 out of 5 stars, and Goodreads rates the book a 3.8 out of 5 stars. And reviews say there's this one person, Bren Anonymous, who rates the book a 4 stars. Ah, high school, a place where the drama is never-ending, and Piper's world, it can be deadly. Knowing me and my problems with high school, I would have to say that high school was the worst four years of my life just because I had so many problems making friends. I lost some friends. I made new friends who were not really good influences on me. And I would rather die than go back to high school. Just saying. And then another person named Paula rates the book a four stars. This is definitely one of my fastest reads this year. It made my heart race and it kept me guessing and made me stay up all night to read this. So if it's that good in her opinion, I value her opinion even though I have no idea who she is. So I can't wait to read the book. The final book that I got by Natalie D. Richards is My Secret to Tell. And that is another young adult fiction contemporary romance thriller standalone novel. And there was blood on his hands, but where was the guilt in his eyes? You can't always trust the boy next door. That's enough for me to get the book and read it, as I have proven several times before. Amazon rates the book a 4 out of 5 stars, and Goodreads rates the book a 3.8 out of 5 stars. So, this is kind of all over the place. There's this one person, Nick, who rates the book a 2 stars. And I really enjoyed Natalie D. Richards' debut novel. It had the perfect balance of suspense and romance. Just the book for me. My Secret to Tell, however, left me feeling really let down by this novel. So, if this is the least enjoyable of Natalie D. Richards' books. I'm still interested in reading it just to form my own opinion. And then another person who reviewed the book, her name is Danielle, she rated the book a three stars, and she said that My Secret to Tell is a book I found to be just okay. Entertaining enough, but not one that I would ever revisit. And if you know me, you know that I do not revisit a lot of books unless they're like the perfect rereads, like Throne of Glass, for instance, or the Ember in the Ashes series by Saba Tahir. So anyway, I am looking forward to reading this book, even with the mixed reviews. And then I got a book by Sierra Malley, who is a favorite LGBTQIA romance novelist. And Colorblind is her book that I got on my Kindle, and that book is a young adult fiction, contemporary romance, LGBTQIA fiction novel. It is getting so hard to remember all those letters, I just have to say. It is a standalone novel, and there's this girl named Harper who has a secret that isn't that she likes girls, because everyone knows that. But she has a rare gift, that she can actually see how old other people will be when they die. So what... <laughs> Forgive my dog for barking and interrupting the video. Anyway, where was I? Right, Colorblind by Sierra Malley. Uh, Harper is this girl that has a secret, and it isn't, it isn't that she likes girls, because everyone knows that. She has a rare gift that she can see how old other people will be when they die. So what will happen to the girl who's destined to be with Harper? The girl who's fated to die before summer's end. And that is making Harper wonder, okay, how can I stop this curse slash gift slash curse again so the love of my life doesn't die? I mean, who would want their, the love of their life to die? Unless you're a psychopath, I can't understand that. So, how did I get there from here? Anyway, as for ratings, Amazon rates the book a 4.8 out of 5 stars, and Goodreads rates the book a 4.2 out of 5 stars. So it's really up there on the rating level, so I can't wait to read it. I am reading Taking Flight, also by Sierra Malley right now, and I am loving it. Oh my gosh. I have nothing bad to say about the novel, but I do feel bad for the character Cammy just because, well, I'll talk about that in a book review when I finish reading that book. So anyway, getting back to Colorblind by Sierra Malley. 
Tiff Anonymous rates the book a five stars. This book is sometimes distressing and heartwarming all at once. I know it's a conundrum, but a glorious one at that. And then there's this other girl, Julia, who rates the book another five stars. This book summary had me wary for more than one reason, but I'm really glad I gave it a chance. It is so worth it. Knowing me, any book is worth it unless it's an algebra textbook on the Pythagorean theorem. I do not understand math at all. Books are my thing, as you can see. Anyway, that is all for today, so if you like that video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to my booktube channel to get more videos like this, and have a great day everyone!